Miter saw. Yes. Saw horses. We're gonna be doing a lot of cutting, so we've got a nice little cut station built up there. All right. We're gonna get the decking upstairs. Okay. All right. Do you want to cut seats on this side? Yeah. Yep. Listen, How am I going to find equal length straps? When I bought those, I checked them. And I got some cash So we're at the end of day three on the Martha's Vineyard build, and today was all about the roof. So we started the day by plumbing all the rafters, getting them into place, and then sheathed the entire roof with a pre-finished pine tongue and groove board. Looks beautiful. Once we got done with that cycle on the roof, we broke for lunch and the roof panels arrived, the rest of the structural insulated panels. So we were able to smoothly transition after lunch into panel preparation and then swinging the panels onto the roof. Luckily, the people in charge of the weather turned the temperature down today. Uh, it was perfect because we had to be on the roof all day, so it worked out really well. The air was a little bit drier, a little bit cooler, and we had a lot more uh, shade via the clouds. Because the SIPs are a sandwich of three different things put together, you have OSB on the outside, OSB on the inside, and foam in the middle, sometimes during the manufacturing process, the skins will get kicked relative to each other. So while the panels look perfect in a stack, in fact, they're rarely absolutely perfect. So what we found is that a panel that's four feet wide, because of that tendency for the skins to be kicked a little bit, actually occupies about 48 and one eighth of an inch. And we have found uh, literally through about 30 years of panel installation that this holds true almost perfectly. So if we're looking at stringing together six panels, there are five joints. We know that the thing is going to occupy five eighths of an inch more than the actual panel widths. And we ran into that today when we were installing our last roof panel. Uh, we got it up into place and we went to check the overhangs and we noticed that at the top of the building the overhang was 11 and a half which is just what we wanted and at the bottom of the panel the overhang was 12 and 3 eighths. A big discrepancy. And you know, short of going back and measuring every single panel, I think it just has to do with the fact that the panels, again, were not put together perfectly and they tended to be a little bit wider cumulatively across the bottom of the roof. So we ended up with an overhang that was too wide. We had to take the panel back off the roof and custom cut it to fit to make sure that the overhang was the same at the top and bottom. There are, in addition to the uh, panel to panel seams, we also have roof panel to wall panel. And then at the peak of the building where the two halves of the roof 
come together is particularly susceptible to leakage. It's the highest point in the building. It's generally where the temperature difference between inside and outside air is greatest. So the, the drive both for air and vapor out through the peak uh, is, is very powerful there. So what we like to do is have the peak panels meet like this. This is a little bit of an exaggeration, but when you're standing on top of the roof, uh, the very peak of the roof is open. That allows us to look inside and it gives us uh, the ability to fully fill that void. If the roof panels are perfectly plumb cut at the peak, they would meet like this and it's difficult for us to see in there and it's also difficult for us to apply foam in there. So our preference is to have the panel manufacturer cut that peak artificially open at the top and we can make sure that it's full both visually and by feel. Nope. Uh. That way we can see that it's... <laughs> it's a long day. <clears throat> Having the uh, peak open like this allows us to make sure that it's full just because we can see it very clearly. And because of this amazing crew, we did in fact get all of the sips on the roof. So two complete courses of roof work today. It's been a grueling day, but a very productive day. Our next step is to put an underlayment on top of the uh, structural insulated panel and then we're going to start laying the metal in. So again, a part of the crew at least will be on the roof all day. It's going to be amazing. Best day ever. All other days, terrible. So one of the things you'll notice uh, as you look at the building at, at this phase is that there are big bulbs of foam in the roof. One of the most critical parts of a, a successful panel installation is filling all of the voids between the panels with foam. Because it's a blind operation, we tend to err on the side of excess foam. So that's why there's a little bit of foam expanding out. It expands by entraining moisture out of the air. Uh, so we're not really in charge of how much it will expand. On a hot, humid day, you get plenty of expansion. On a cold, dry day, you get very little expansion. So we always like to make sure that the void is filled by, by blowing expanding foam in until we start to see it blow out. Then we know that the void is full. On this build, we installed an exposed fastener roof. So each sheet gives you 36 inches of coverage and the uh, sheet manufacturer will actually cut the individual sheets to the nearest inch length. We can have the sheets custom cut, so there's very little work to do when the sheets arrive on site. The other style of metal that we install is known as snap lock, and it looks a little bit like a standing seam, but instead of us forming that standing seam on site, the panel manufacturer actually bends the sheets. Uh, when they arrive on site, we bring them onto the roof, and they actually snap into each other to create a watertight seal from one sheet to the next. The screws that hold the metal onto the roof are installed on the underlapping leg of the metal. So when a subsequent sheet gets installed, the overlapping rib covers those screws. So from the exterior, you don't see any fasteners unlike this exposed fastener version. The hidden fastener is significantly more expensive. We're over the hump now with uh, getting the metal on the roof. We can relax a little bit. It's always a little bit stressful when you have a pre-finished plank ceiling. If it rains, you never know what's gonna happen. Obviously, nothing good. So at this point, all of that stuff is waterproof. We don't need to worry about it. Great visit from Frances. She is super excited. She actually says she can't wait to move in, though she knows it's gonna be a little bit of time still, three months, six months. Evidently, the island's very busy during the summer, but she's very excited. She had some good questions, some good feedback. She loves the color of the roof, which is always a little dicey. People order the roof from a two inch by two inch swatch usually, so we never really know how it's going to be received. One of the problems with these lighter colors is that they tend to get even brighter uh, when you install them on a big roof like this. So this is a fairly bright blue roof. It is stunning. Uh, it certainly catches your eye when you walk in, but she loves it. Our next step is to put two more timber frames to build. We've got a timber frame covered entry on the uh, front and the side of the building. Hey guys, here at the Shelter Institute, we've been teaching people to design and build their homes since 1974, and we've been building timber frames for about 40 years. We design and build timber frames, we sell fine woodworking tools, we teach house building classes of many different types. If you'd like to learn more about what we do, 
Check us out in person here at our store in Woolwich, Maine, or online at shelterinstitute.com.